What's up guys, this is Drew, and I am the SDSU EE Tutor. So we're going to go over a little bit about instruction set architectures, okay? I, S, A. So instruction set architecture. It's basically how you're mapping out your ones and zeros in the computer to make some logic, right? So if you look in some of these charts, it basically maps out different numbers to different instructions, right? So if you get zero zero, then that's a halt. If you get a one zero, then that's a nope. If you get two zero, then that's a register to register move L. So <clears throat> by mapping different numbers, we can tell the computer to do different things. So if we look at the boxes we have, the top box up here shows us the different instructions we have. This box right here shows us the different functions of instructions that have multiple functions. And this box over here tells us the numbers mapped to each register. All right, so let's try and expand on this a little bit. All right, so instructions are made up of ones and zeros, right? Ones and zeros. And the idea is we're going to say that each chunk of ones and zeros means something in terms of an instruction or a register or a number. Um, and, and that's how we're going to map things. So in the book, you'll see iCode and iFun. This is one byte. Okay, iCode gets four bits and iFun gets four bits. So iCode tells us which function is it. All right, so if we look back up, which function is it? That's this guy. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. What type of instruction are we doing? iFun tells us which function of that instruction we want. All right, so if we look back up here, uh, the first couple ones are zeros, but when we hit this guy right here, fn, 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 right, this means that there are multiple functions. This guy is operation L, so that's your add L, subtract L, XOR, uh, and other functions. This is your jump, right? There are multiple jump functions. There's just regular plain old jump. There's jump greater than, jump less than, jump equal to. Uh, so we have to decide which one of those we want, and that's decided in iFun. Right? And then if we need registers, we have to specify which registers we're talking about. So that's RA and RB, and they both get four bits each. So let's take a look up here. Right, so register to register, move L, RA and RB. You're going to need to move from one register to the other register, right? So you will need two of these values. And then these values tell you which register it is. If there's a zero in that spot, then it's EAX. If there's a one, then it's ECX. If there's a two, then EDX, and so on and so forth. I think you get the picture, so we're moving on. So in terms of what this actually looks like in memory, so here are our addresses. Right, this is in memory, and in memory we have these values stored that are going to tell our computer what to do. So we start at address 0, 1, 0, 0, and we have, this would be 2 in hexadecimal. All right, so this would be 2, and this would be 0. Okay, so this corresponds to I code, and this would be I fun. All right, so what we can do is we can look up to our charts, and we can say, okay, this is 2 and 0. This is supposed to be a register to register move L. All right. And then these guys tell us which registers. All right, so this tells us register 0 and register 1. Right, so we're doing a register to register move long from EAX to ECX. All right, and then the next instruction will just follow after that. 
So fetch gets the instruction. It basically just gets the ones and zeros and sees what it does. Decode reads data from the registers. Execute does any math. So for example, if you said, oops, if you said ink EAX, right? This would just be EAX plus one. That is math, right? So that that would happen in the execute stage, and then. Memory is reading or writing to memory. Write back stage updates the registers, or you write the new values to the registers. And PC update updates the program counter to the correct address of the next instruction. So the book starts giving us these diagrams right here. So on the fetch stage, every instruction will have an I code and an I fun. Okay, and they will be located at the program counter and it will be one byte of memory. Okay, this M1 says one byte at program counter. Right, so this is program counter and this is one byte. Right, one byte. Then if it uses a register, you're going to have to use this notation where you say RA semicolon RB and this will equal memory one at PC plus one. Right, so PC plus one would be PC plus one. Right, so these guys, this is RA right here, and this is RB right here. Right, RA, RB, PC1, PC plus 1, right here, okay, this address. So then val C is the constant, right? If you look at our function, we're doing a constant to register move. So this is some value, this is some constant, right? And that will get stored in val C. So you'll say val C equals four bytes of memory starting at PC plus two, right? So PC is here, PC plus two would be PC plus two, right here, right? So then all of this. is stored in valsi right this is just one four byte word uh, and if we look at this instruction we can see that indeed it is ir move l so if we go back to the very top ir move l is three zero right and then F says that there's no register because we take a constant here, right? So there's no need for a register. So we place F instead because F means no register. So then the next one we have RB goes in that value. And that will just be one of the seven from here. Sorry, one of the eight from there. And then this V is stored in our ones and zeros. So if we go back, oops. So if we go back, this is three zero, right? This is F, and then this is one. So I believe that is E C X in our diagram, and then zero 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 zero. So this is technically one. So our function says IR move L dollar sign one comma percent E C X. See so we can represent the entire instruction fully just by ones and zeros. 